we are very excited to share with you a project very close to our hearts, featuring Joni Blackshaw's remarkable 13 Moons West. 13 Moons is what we call a composing piece, as it invites members of the ensemble to interpret, organize, and communicate the material provided by the composer. A great deal of creative freedom is given to the ensemble, and members are encouraged to develop ideas and opinions about how the piece should go. There are no right and wrong interpretations, and one ensemble's version will never be the same as another's. Having a creative piece like this really expands our understanding of what music is, essentially, mainly because we've been reading music and interpreting sheet music written by other artists. It's completely different when we ourselves have to be more of the artist. When composing a piece like this, our like, creativity is almost challenged in the sense that we're not just playing the notes on a page. We're not just like trying to interpret what's already there. We're creating something that we are then like expressing throughout a story. It's, it's a new experience to end up behind, behind the camera, so to speak, and to be in the composer's shoes. You know, we were very fortunate to be able to speak with, with Jody Blackshaw about some of her ideas behind the piece. Um, and for me personally, that was very enlightening to, to get a sense of that. The fact that this band composed the piece in this particular way, and often individual members are playing ideas that they came up with during the creative process, gives them that sort of innate connection and fosters that sort of creativity and greater amount of teamwork. Concert Wins has been on an incredible journey with 13 Moons. Starting back in October, the first thing that really hooked us was the beautiful book this piece is inspired by. 13 Moons on Turtle's Back by Joseph Bruchek and Jonathan London is a collection of indigenous moon stories that celebrate the wonder of nature and the changing seasons. Many North American First Nations relate the cycles of the moon to these seasons, and they look to the back of a turtle's shell as a sort of calendar. The turtle's shell has 13 large segments, each representing one of the 13 moons of the lunar year. The turtle's shell also has 28 smaller segments that go around the perimeter, and those represent the 28 days between moons. This beautiful idea that all things are connected and that we must try to live in balance with one another and all who inhabit the earth really grabbed us and our entire creation for this piece is based on that idea. We began by learning and contemplating the musical material that Jody Blackshaw provided for us. This includes scales, melodies, counter melodies, accompaniments, drones, transitional material, and so on. For this movement, West, we were given three character melodies or motifs, one for nature, one for animals, and one for humans. We were also asked to create our own melody for the atmosphere. What stood out to us immediately was the need to explore how each of these are connected. So, after several Zoom sessions, including one with Jody all the way from Australia, as well as rather deep discussions and experiments in early rehearsals, Concert Wind students took inspiration from the number 13 and embarked on creating a composition that has 13 segments of its own. My role as director in this piece became more of a collector and organizer of ideas, a facilitator of conversation, and an enabler of experimentation. I just really like hearing everybody's opinions because a lot of the time I don't think of these things and it's, it's quite interesting that one part I think that we should be quiet and soft and everybody else is like, no, we need to like bang it out. We need to have bright brass and, and huge percussion. And it's quite interesting seeing everybody's opinion. Um, and that was really, really inspiring um, to me was seeing this process of people's voices gradually um, get louder and louder and more people contributing to the discussion. The process has been pretty involved for the whole ensemble. We start to look at all of the 13 sections very holistically and then we realize we really need to go in and think about the details and think about the transitions and what exactly was happening in each section and making sure the arch of the entire structure was strong. It's one thing to have ideas about structure and about shape and, and form and even about some specific things but if you don't put those together in a way that is interesting and continuous and that sounds good you don't end up with a product that is as exciting to listen to or as exciting to play. The students chose to turn each of these melodies into sort of light motifs where each melody is represented by a different instrument. 
We begin with the idea of atmosphere, as it was here first, before other parts of nature, before animals, before humans. Our percussionist and pianist, Leah, composed a motif for atmosphere, represented by the flute, which is present throughout most of the piece along with atmospheric sounds, suggestive of wind, rain, and water. We then add the nature motif, represented by the alto saxophone, then the animal motif, represented by the trombone, and our atmospheric sounds on stage are enhanced with sounds of animals and trees and forests. Next comes a human motif, represented by the trumpet, and symbolically is proud sounding, but this is where things start to get out of balance, suggestive of the damaging impact humans have had over time on our natural world. The students decided that one final motif was needed to complete the depiction of our world, the machine motif, which was written by one of our trumpet players, Ben. It is with the addition of machines that we reach a point of chaos and a point of unbalance that really can no longer be sustained, and so everything comes to a screeching halt. It is only then that we can begin the process of learning to live together in harmony. The interpretation came gradually as we went forward with the creative process, and students would come forward with their ideas of what each section meant. Ultimately, I think that we wanted to tell a story because stories are interesting. And we sort of tell a story about our generation's perspective of nature and its relationship with humanity. I think our interpretation is multifaceted and multidisciplinary um, in the sense that there isn't sort of one goal of what we're trying to say. Sure, there's the overarching narrative of mankind gradually overtaking nature and then learning from its mistakes and learning to coexist. But at the same time, I think we're making other statements um, within the music itself. The fact that we're playing a piece on traditional Musqueam territory um, and the fact that this piece has uh, a performance with a connotation of being isolated and shut down as a result of the pandemic. Um, our experience and our message behind the piece transcends any sort of one meaning or one goal. The ideas portrayed in the second half of the piece show that we are stronger together. We are capable of picking up the pieces that reconciliation and regrowth are possible and that we truly can live lives that are more reflective and thoughtful. We discuss at length the idea of awareness and harmony in all areas of our lives, with particular appreciation and respect for indigenous ways of knowing and principles of learning, that all elements of creation can teach us, that learning is holistic, and that it is a journey that takes courage, patience, and humility. So you will hear each of the motifs redevelop and come together in new, more connected ways. Throughout the piece, three moon stories are featured, Moon when acorns appear, moon when wolves run together, and baby bear moon. The piece ends with the singing of a gorgeous chorale with music again composed by Ben and text by Elizabeth, our bass clarinetist. The chorale weaves together the motifs, some text from the moon stories, and also features original text from Elizabeth that we have found so deeply meaningful. The thing that I found the most inspiring about this piece was the fact that each person was able to contribute a part of themselves to the performance, not only in terms of what instrument they played, but also in the actual creative process. We see people work on, on simpler goals. I mean, fairly common, right? People sign a petition, people show up at a protest. Very important things, but it's rare that you see a process where people's ideas end up so directly and explicitly implanted on, on the final product. And so that's been a really, a really inspiring moment. And it's really unlike really anything else that I've had the chance to, to experience. Through this piece, it inspires a lot of that kind of learning where we all work together, we all learn from each other, and in a way we can create our own story. And I think that's just a really important lesson to have. In a year when we have seen so clearly how much we take our regular lives for granted, we have been extra thankful for the opportunity to make music together and to open ourselves up to the incredible and vulnerable experience of creating our version of 13 Moons West.
When the world was new, it was covered with water, until Earth Elder, the creator, reached down to the mud below and placed it upon Turtle's back. Earth Elder shaped the sun and the stars, then sat for a moment, thinking of what was most needed, what would help the humans still to come. That was when Earth Elder made the first tree, a great oak with 12 branches arching over the land. Then, sitting beneath it, the sun shining bright, Earth Elder thought of food for the people, and acorns began to form. So it is, each year, when the sun shines the brightest, these first acorns come, and our Pomo people gather this moon's coming harvest.
Long ago, an old wolf came to that time when his life on Earth could last no longer. My people, he said, you can follow my footsteps when the time comes for you to join me in the Skyland. Then he left the Earth, climbing higher and higher, and each place he stepped, the sky filled with stars. Shunk Manitutanka, we call the wolves, the powerful spirits who look like dogs. When they climb the hills, lift their heads and sing toward that road of stars, their songs grow stronger as they join their voices. So, in this moon, we climb the hills, we lift our eyes, and we head toward the wolf trail, and remember that our lives and songs are stronger when we are together. Long ago, a small child was lost in the snow. We thought she had frozen, but when spring came again, she was seen with a mother bear and her small cubs. She had slept all through the winter with them, and from then on, the bears were her family and her friends. When we walk by on our snowshoes, we will not bother a bear or her babies. Instead, we think how those small bears are like our children. We let them dream together. <laughs> 